when you're tracking from the beginning, is there any things you consistently do as far as no. mic choices? No. You know, there's not at all. Yeah. There is nothing. There is no. There is nothing. Nothing is sacred. Nothing is taboo. Mm -hmm. There is nothing. I don't care. Yeah. If there's an engineer, that's great. Mm -hmm. If there's not, an assistant is great. Mm -hmm. It's like this. Seriously. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of really expensive microphones mm -hmm. in the world, and even a lot of really good cheap ones. Mm -hmm. Find something you want to record, put a microphone in front of it. It's kind of that simple. Oh, wow. It's not rocket science. Yeah. It's like, you know, there are some guys that do it better than others, and, mm -hmm. and, and there's definitely more of an art to mixing now than tracking although it shouldn't be because the great records back in the day were tracked so well mm -hmm. that mi mi mixing them was i mean the rough mix was the mix exactly. the tracking was all important yeah. it's changed now and so in with that in mind i see you know i see there's a console behind you and it's that uh, how what is your mix process and as far as what you have in the room what you must have how um, does it happen the most, I guess the most crucial thing for me are the monitors, mm. and I just have to know where I'm at. Exactly. Um, and I happen to use fairly inexpensive monitors that mm -hmm. they don't make anymore, because as soon as something's good, you should stop making it. That's the way <laughs> people behave. So KRK made these uh, 6,000 monitors back in the 90s, and I love them. Mm -hmm. I have uh, 13 pairs of them. And... Uh, we change the drivers every now and then. I had boxes of drivers all in, in, in warehouses all over the place. And um, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then everything else is, there's just audio coming through the faders and mm -hmm. I get to play with it. Mm -hmm. And I just turn it on and turn it up mm -hmm. and, and do your thing. And do my thing. And mixes don't take very long for me. Mm. And uh, it bothers me sometimes that they don't take very long because I would like to take long. But I find that I generally have an idea within an hour of where the mix is. Wow. And it doesn't take me much longer than that. The song is the boss as far as that the goes. The song is the boss, yeah. always. I had a drink with Mick Ronson. You remember Mick Ronson? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, before he died, and he was at a bar in Woodstock, and he was getting drunk, and he said to me, When you produce a song, <laughs> the thing to do is record the vocal first. You record the vocal first... And then you put all the rest of the band and the instruments around it. Put the record the vocal first. That's how we make records. And I, it kind of stuck with me a little bit because, as nonsensical as it is, the song is the is the boss. Yeah. It's like yeah. everything else is incidental. Yeah. Everything else is just you know sprinkles on the donut. Exactly. Icing on the cake. Whatever you want. It's you know um, the song and getting the emotion of the song. I mean the things that we do to music are to enhance the emotion that you mm -hmm. are looking for sadness or happiness or energy or yeah. darkness or, or or ugliness or it's heaviness like trying to get a connection i guess of yeah. some kind you know is the idea right cool so um and when you're mixing generally i mean it, do you are you more using the automation on the console or in your DAW Pro Tools? 100% on the console. Oh, wow. Um, this has got such an easy automation system, mm -hmm. this duality. It's it's beyond simple. Mm -hmm. You just turn it on and start moving the fader, and then you go, go back, and it follows. There's no saving, and there's no this, yeah. and no that, and no that. It's so it's really great. Wow. It's easier. It's faster than doing it in the, yes. in the Pro Tools. Yeah. And it's, it gets me what I want to do, you know. Right. Um, I don't really do much in in Pro Tools other than edit and mm -hmm. uh, and play back off there. Yeah, there are th some things I do in Pro Tools. I mean, simple things like individual delays. Mm -hmm. You can't beat Pro Tools because you can have ten slaps running slightly differently. If you can have outboard doing slaps and delays, you'd have a rack of exactly. that stuff. And yeah. it's so s straightforward, you know. I just have a tendency to pull a um, the low pass thing down a little bit so it's a little bit duller on mm -hmm. the slaps and then i just use the nice. delays in there but other than that 
Not yeah, much at all. Just, uh, it's more convenient to just grab a fader, grab an EQ. And it is, and yeah. the compressors sound better outside the box. Yeah. And so uh, as far as any tricks on the console that you'd like to share, as far as anything you're doing? Uh, the only trick I'm... Uh, yeah. The only trick that I really use on the console is I'm running this... As you know, this duality runs... Uh, you can run the input stage many mm -hmm. different ways. You mm -hmm. can have the hyper-clean, uh, super-analog SSL path, mm -hmm. which has got a distortion quotient of, I think, 0 0.003%. Yeah. Then you can run it on um, the mic input mm -hmm. uh, 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 flip, mm -hmm. which is basically what I do. And then uh, you get about 0.3% distortion. So your distortion factor is quite a lot mm -hmm. up on the on the traditional SSL clean signal path. Mm -hmm. It's I happen to prefer it a whole lot more. It yeah. sounds a lot more old school to me, a lot more rock and roll. Exactly. When you have that, you can still engage. They have uh, uh, harmonic drivers on these consoles as mm -hmm. well, and you can engage the second and third harmonics if mm -hmm. you really want to more accurately recreate like uh, an API yeah. sound or a Neve uh, a mic pre sound. Mm -hmm you know like the transformer thing mm -hmm. but i find i run it with the uh, mic in nice uh, flipped and i just love the su the sound and and uh i've been into a few studios i went to see uh a guy at germano studios in new york and he has one too and yeah. the guy was mixing an ozzy osbourne track and he was running it super clean and mm -hmm. it had no balls in it and You're i right. said to him flip it over you'll mm -hmm. you'll be amazed at the difference it'll it's, make wow and um it's uh, not a trick because yeah. it's there for yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, I think distortion figures might scare people. <laughs> no. but uh, Distortion's good. You know, um, <laughs> that's about the only thing. There are no other tricks, really, yeah. that I can think of. I mean, they're really not. There's, you know, there really are not tricks. Um, I mean, there are tricks, but I don't yeah. really use them much. Yeah. I mean, I've got nothing. I've got straight up drums coming. Mm -hmm. No, nothing on them, and it's just balance. Left, yeah. right, stereo. <laughs> it's easy. Just what's do so, it. What's so hard? <laughs> I can't do. T I, I can't fill out my taxes, but someone finds it easy to do. Oh, now here's a question. You know, that personally drives me insane. How do you or do you deal with the recall issues? I don't. You don't. If the mix is wrong, just redo it. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Yeah, I mean, I, the recalls don't work. Yeah. I'll tell you what I do do mm -hmm. uh, is, yeah, this is a trick. Mm -hmm. I find that if I have a mix, and generally, I would say in 99% of the cases, no one ever asks for anything less. Mm -hmm. They will ask for something more mm -hmm. in a recall. Mm -hmm. So then I will just sync up. I just move this, move the recorded multitrack back so it's... Um, it's sample accurate am yeah. accurate with yeah. the rest of the track mm -hmm. and then I'll blend in that piece of what they want into that mix and keep the go. original mix there you go but t recalls don't I mean recalls don't work yeah and also there's something about the tactile nature of mixing for me I love mm. feeling them and I I feel where all those things are going when I do a recall I lose I lose I lose uh the feeling of all those instruments that are just running on their own. I just yeah. don't get them. Yeah, exactly. I just don't get, I just don't know what that's, it's soulless at that yeah. point to me. Yeah, it sounds like what you're doing in essence is almost like a really good rough mix. It's yeah. not even in essence, it's, yeah. it's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a really good, you know, it's a real, it's not even a really good rough mix, it's a rough mix. Yeah, that's okay. Um, yeah. An engineer you know, told me from, uh, talk about old school, this guy who started in the 50s told me once that after 10 minutes of listening to a mix, you've lost perspective already. So you either get it immediately or, you know, you can always tweak it and, of course, right. still ride the vocal and stuff. But the essence of the balance is, you know, you get immediately. Yeah, I'm not sure that 10 yeah. minutes is about... Is, is, <laughs> no, no, not that. But it's probably not far off, yeah. though. There is no easy way in the music business to mm -hmm. make things work. There just isn't way, an easy way and and and... And once you res once you resign yourself to the to that fact, know that there are ways to make it work in the business. Mm -hmm. One, the number one way to make it work in this business is hard work. If you want to get out on the road for forty 
two forty five weeks a year and mm -hmm. play the clubs and win over the audience one member at a time mm -hmm. and have them be in your street team and buy your records in five years you will have got five ten thousand people buying your records mm -hmm. and you just there's no other way to do it i mm -hmm. mean you can you can get lucky and and be one of those that signs away their existence to a record company never to see any returns because they don't recoup anything on on what they spend on mm -hmm. those records on radios and anything else mm -hmm. and in that if you if you do what you love it it will come to you you have to work hard and be dedicated and be clever about what you invest your money and your time in mm -hmm. uh, one of the things you don't skimp on is making a record mm -hmm. people will come to me and say i made this record for five thousand dollars whoopie do <laughs> you know and what's that going to do for you apart yeah. from it only costing you five thousand well the downside of that is you can say well if we if we spend fifty thousand dollars on making a record it's going to take us selling fifteen thousand dollars to recoup our money that's mm -hmm. not the right way to think about yeah. a record what it's going to do is it's going to open up the people that are listening to your music mm -hmm. and you're going to find yourself exposed. You're going to find your ticket price can go up. You're going to find your venues that you're playing mm -hmm. or going up. And it's all interrelated. Mm -hmm. People talk about 360 degree uh, deals. This is what the business is now. Mm -hmm. you, you, ha it's an, you, you, know, you don't buy an ad to sell washing powder and saying, well, we need to sell 72,000 packets of cascade in order to make our money back just mm. on the marketing mm -hmm. it's not about that it's about getting a much bigger audience for your mm -hmm. for your product and music is a product whether you like it or not some people don't want to call it that mm -hmm. but you need people to come to the gigs you want people to come to the gigs and if you spend money on the records they'll come to the gigs too mm -hmm. and um you you cannot look at the returns from the records as being what funds the recording of the records yeah. which in my view, got us to where we are now. You know, too many, too many bean counters, and not enough, you know, musicians, and not enough budgets. Yeah, yeah, and not yeah. enough budgets. And yeah. when you know, you go and see guys like Bonamassa, who mm -hmm. are this model. He spends money making a record. He'll right. go and spend a hundred thousand dollars making a record. Right. And and he doesn't look at uh, at I got to sell fifty thousand records in order to no. make that money back. He goes, no. you know, we'll make it back in four weeks of touring or you know whatever exactly. it is that's smart that's it's a different smart. way of thinking yeah it's it's uh you know music if you put your music first i think ultimately you'll and no notes too high exactly thanks so much man and uh i just want to thank you know ssl for getting us together it was a cool yeah. and thanks for not hitting me with the stick you know caveman uh, i didn't know what to expect uh, so yeah. <laughs> could go either way <laughs> I, I i had a club for a while actually there it is I, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever had to use it? Use I have. You know who I've hit? <laughs> I've hit Steven Tyler with this club. That's for real. And I'm, I'm sure it was well deserved. Yeah, it was well deserved. It was a long time ago. Cool, man. Great, Dave. Thanks thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>